So I'm asked a lot about string boiling and stuff. And I thought everybody knew this, but I told some people this week, I'm probably asked four or five times a week about how I boil my strings and stuff. And uh, So I'm going to show you how I do it, my, my recipe for boiling the strings. What I do is I keep a set of strings in my bag that have been cooked already, that I boiled so that they're fresh. And if I need to change my strings, I change them. And I always have a good set in the bag, a used set. So um, I actually like the strings better after they've been cooked than brand new. So uh, the only thing that's killing your strings is your, you know, for me, my greasy Italian fingers are going to kill my strings. So uh, you just got to get the dirt and oil out of them, and then they're, they're better than new. So this is what I do. What I do is I, I take the strings, and you just roll them up, you know, ball, like that. These ones have been cooked probably eight or ten times already, these ones. Uh, throw them in the pan here, a pan of water, and don't use a good pan. Don't use one of your mom's good pans or something because you're going to ruin the pan when you do this. And I think the mistake people make is they just do it in water. And what you got to do is you got to use like uh, laundry detergent. So you use, uh, I use Tide or Gain or something here. And I just put a teaspoon in because that doesn't sud up. It's not going to get the suds high on it. And uh, that stuff cuts the grease great in your clothes and in your strings. And that's it. Just throw that in there. You stir it up. And then you boil it for, I usually boil it for about 15 minutes. All right, so after they boil for 15, 20 minutes, you bring them over to the sink. Hot water, rinse them out, and get all the soap off. There we go. That's about it. Just dry them off. Be ready to put them on, or throw them in the bag, whatever. All right. So when you put these on, I would advise you not to. Don't cut the strings. Don't cut any length off because you need that to get the tension down on the bottom. So you wind them from the top, get them down to the bottom, and then you can just put your finger on and wind it all the way to the bottom of the machine. You want that tension coming over the nut, especially when you get to the E and the A string. Don't cut the strings. If you can't, if you don't have to, on some machines you have to. Okay, so I'm gonna cut the same bass line twice. I'll play the same slap groove twice. First time with the dead strings. And then the second time, I'll boil them up and I'll play it with the uh, boiled strings and you'll hear the difference back to back on the groove. Uh, I'm running my jazz bass like I always do, wide open, both volumes all the way up, and I'm directly into garage band. There's no EQ, nothing. It's just dry right in there. Here we go. Okay, so we're back here, and now I'm going to uh, I'm going to cut it with the fresh strings, so you hear the sound with the with the boiled strings. Here we go.
So there you go. You can hear when we when we go back to back and we splice them back to back. You can hear there's a big difference. There's a big difference in the high end in the shimmering, especially when you're when you're thumbing on the higher strings. You can really hear the uh, the overtones of the bass. You know, cutting more and that cut through more. You know, uh, in the music when you're recording and stuff. And you know, to me, I like the sound better after they've been boiled as opposed to a new set of strings when you can't control the the overtones and the strings are very stiff uh, you know they get out of control they're hard to mute they're hard to control especially when you're playing slap uh, so I, I prefer them once they've been broken in they're already soft and they're easy to play and they sound great so that's my method try it <laughs>